I, I guess the dark cloud that kind of sits over this process is the timeline that's in that rec that that um, uh, what the board's looking for, mm -hmm. um, because all of these scenarios of of a new school, I even if you <coughs> if they make sense because of programming and capital mm -hmm. costs and that sort of thing, they don't meet the board's uh, timeline that that shows the board is, is sort of teetering on a, on a financial crisis, mm -hmm. of making a decision at the end of the spring about a school next fall. Mm -hmm. So as a community member, how do you how do you make these decisions with that timeline hanging over you? The timeline is, a, is an enforced one, uh, I won't say an enforced one, one created by the board. They've established this, inf this arc to respond back by such and such a time. And I don't know where that timeline came from at the board level. It was enforced by the Ministry of Education or the province and some other jurisdiction. Or by the pressing need. Or by the pressing need. That you're right. Uh, we're not privy to that to that type of to that information at this point in time. As, as you mentioned in the uh, at the onset, the idea of the arc is to provide recommendation, what the community get f feedback from the community and provide that back to the board. What do they want to see, and what will they support as a community going forward? And I think that's that's why we're boiling down to these one of these two scenarios. And there may be other scenarios might, come forward. What you might see with one of those two scenarios too is a recommendation that the board try it for a year or two years or whatever, put put the closure scenario on hold for a year, give us a chance to get the money, the funding, to build yeah. a new place and then make the decision down the road if you don't get it. And you're not the, the, the finance guy with the board and I understand no, no, that. Absolutely. But um, do you think sharing some of the same offices, can they afford to, to wait a year? Well, no. <laughs> no, they can't. But but. In fact, I mean, we've been waiting for five now and not doing anything. We haven't been able to afford that either. So. Yeah. I think the ARC is putting the, putting the, the feet to the fire of everybody, the, the community, the school board, and hopefully now the province. To... So we, the public has seen three scenarios. One was pretty much put forward by the school board, closing one of four. Mm -hmm. The other two scenarios are, are the two we just discussed, one new school for four or one new school for, for two. Mm -hmm. um, Following last public meeting where you talked about those two more recent scenarios, what's the feedback been? Uh, we, we don't have it yet. We are about to put out some uh, survey to all the school councils and to the parents of the, of the kids that are involved in the four schools and also to the staffs. Uh, and by the next public meeting, by the third public meeting, we hope to get some information back in a, from a wider base of, of, of uh, input than we have right now. We heard some pretty strong opinions at that last meeting. and. I myself, I'm, I'm convinced that there's other points of view out there. I don't know how strong they are, but I think that's part of the arch role is to get, to get as much as possible a balanced perspective on what's happening out in the community, what the points of view are, and be able to express all points of view, not just one. I don't envy the role because part of this process is, is um, it's an emotional process. Absolutely. Um, people have been through schools for generations, live near schools, or, or just to have that relationship with their school. Um, how do you? How do you um, take in that, that emotional feedback, sort through it, and, and maybe more importantly, how do you um, communicate with the public as you work towards this recommendation while navigating their, their emotional feedback? Do it very carefully, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think that's, to Phil's point, I think that's one of the reasons we're going back out over and above the people that have taken the time to come to the public meetings and express in a very, very passionate and articulate way why they like one scenario over another. I won't comment on which one they were supporting. But they've been very impassioned and, and as I say, very articulate in those presentations. We're looking for more of that mm -hmm. uh, to support what the gut feeling is that the ARC has now, I think. Uh, but we need that reinforced, as the board does. So we want to be able to go to the board on the 25th of March and say, look, this is definitively uh, all other things being equal, we recognize the financial crunch you're under. We're recognizing that these that the schools we want to keep open are older and going to need capital repairs. But at the same to by the same token, the communities with which in with in which they are located are extremely passionate about the retention of those facilities for the kids in those communities. And that's the passion we've got to be able to exhibit to the board and hopefully they can in turn exhibit that passion to uh, to the to the province. And Phil, what are, uh, what are the opportunities that remain for the public to, to give their feedback? There's a couple more public meetings, I yeah, believe. Yeah, there's another one on the 15th of uh, February. 13th. 13th, 13th of February. February. Wednesday the 13th. At, at one of the schools? This is at Victory, the next okay. one. Right? And then the fourth one, 
Don't it's remember. First week of March. I can't remember the yeah, date. I think it's, the uh, third, it's at McDougal second School. Second or third of March. But anyway, it's on our website. All the info, all the information from all the ARC meetings is on our website. Okay. And you guys are open to, to phone calls and absolutely and, and, and emails. Feedback? Yeah, anytime. Yeah. Yep, by all means. And yep. we very quickly, um, Bill. We have a, uh, we do have a little movement of municipal leaders who uh, seem to be taking interest mm -hmm. in this. Um, do you think that the They'll make a difference. Do you think that momentum is building something? Very much so. There's a uh, the Ontario Association of Municipalities AMO was meeting in uh, in Toronto uh, late in February, and I know that uh, a number of the Reeves and mayors from Westbury Sound will be attending, and they are planning to make a presentation to uh, any number of ministers uh, in attendance at that conference. That uh, uh, this is what the community wants, and that's one of the reasons we're trying to make sure that the uh, municipal reps are up to speed with where the ARC is coming from. A number of municipalities have been represented at the two public meetings so far. Uh, Mayor Robinson from McDougal will be making a presentation at the Victory meeting on the 13th, uh, bringing the, the, uh, the feelings of McDougal Township and I assume one or two of the other municipalities to that table so, so the ARC can hear that directly from them and carry that message back. Uh, well, I appreciate your time today, Phil. Well, Thanks, Jack. Jack. Bill. Pleasure. And thank you for watching and question. If you have any comments or feedback you'd like to give about this program, uh, visit us at perrysound.com. Thank you very much.